And we're live. And that golden calf over there, he's straight with it too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's fuck. What was the golden calf? That was B A A L. How do you pronounce it? Is that Bell? Bale? Yeah. Bale? Yeah. Bale. Like B A L. pronounced it. Yeah, I, I, I've heard Bale. <laughs> Like in, in church, like my uh, my Sunday school teacher always like put a lot of emphasis on it. She was like Bial or something like silly like that, and I was like, "Are you sure about that?" And uh, but you know, you know, question. No, you're not allowed to ask questions because they'll no. go, "Of course I am." You you didn't read the book, and it's like, "Ah, you caught me." Like <laughs> yeah. it's like, "Oh damn it!" You, you, you're right. I didn't do any of the prescribed reading, which is funny because it's like I like it wasn't until I was totally on my own volition that I read the fucking thing. Like up until then, it was just an ordeal of like, how can I sneak around faking it? You know, I enjoyed you know, the oh, stories. Yeah. I enjoyed the stories. If you've got a good preacher, then you don't need to be religious to go to church. You really don't. It's a it's a show sometimes. Like you, you can right. go and sit into a, you can go to a, like a Baptist church somewhere and sit down. And if you're if you happen to come to the right sermon, you don't need to take anything religious from it. It'll just be some good life advice, right? And and he'll tell you a, a story from the Bible or an allegory as the rest of us know them. And 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 you'll take away from it some real meaning that you can apply in modern day life a lot of times. And you often leave with a good feeling, a good positive feeling. Um, it, you know, it, you just got to get around all of the worshiping, the the, the zombie thing. We yeah. tried to get into the church. It wasn't so much because I needed to be closer to God. It was because I, I wanted a community. I was like, all right. What kind gonna... were you trying to join real quick? Uh, I think it was a Catholic church. It was involved in oh, my daughter's oh. preschool and stuff. Uh, okay. St. Mary Magdalene, does that sound Catholic to you? Yeah, know. it does. Yeah, that's very... Very... yeah so... Um, uh, so anyway, like, you know, we wanted, she got into the kindergarten, but like first grade wasn't guaranteed. So we're like, all right, we're going to join this community, whatever. Go on. Wasn't Mary Magdalene a whore? Uh, I think yes. she was, yeah. 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 Your daughter's school's named her for a whore? Uh, she you know, was a blessed, a blessed <laughs> prostitute. You know, the but, Lord loved prostitutes. Right, so how does that not he... tie into Catholic school girls anyway? So, uh, so, so we went there to like you know, I guess engage in the community. I had, there were some woodworkers there. I was hanging out with them and doing that myself, but the church itself were such fuckheads. Like I, I fucking hated them. The, the, you know how you had that good experience with the speaker and feel good and whatever. I couldn't understand a word fucking Methuselah was saying up there. He wasn't entertaining. He seemed to lose track of what he was saying all the time. Oh, and he didn't speak like clearly. Church. And I think he had too much saliva in his mouth. It was just a really probably terrible still, experience. Y- oh. He was probably speaking in Latin, Woody. Like, they wanted yeah, your this, money. Like, oh, the so is you I'm not done. They, he, they were so yeah. fucking after your money. Like step one in joining this church is bringing in like an account slip so they can take their whatever the opposite of a direct deposit is, like a direct withdrawal from your bank. Like they're not asking for checks. They're asking for access. Like, all right, give me the transfer numbers and your account numbers so that I, you know, and, and sign over this authorization so I can take money from your bank account automatically. That's how this place rolled. And then on top of wow. that, it was like, give me things to sell that we we can like donate and do raffles and whatever, but they were big things. This church would take in like $75,000 twice a year in these raffles. And in exchange, I was getting nothing. Like, they're, they're, like every, every experience, every interaction I had with these guys was either shit or just sucking money out of my account. Neither of which I was a big fan of. And I don't know, at the end, like I fucking hated church more than before I knew them. And it's like, you know so, what? If these church people don't like my lack of interaction with them, they have themselves to blame because they're dicks. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible experience. Um, that is not the Protestant experience on the whole. Um, you, you, the whole tithing thing, you know, it's, 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 it's certainly never compulsory. I've, I've never seen the whole direct deposit thing. Maybe it's more prevalent now because I haven't been to church in a few years. But, you know, they pass that golden plate around. And everybody throws a few bucks in it. And you feel good because, like, our the churches that that I always went to, like, they did good things with that money. They were very, they weren't very, like, see, the difference, it was Catholic cathedrals are absolutely outrageous. You see them spent, you know, you see the Pope on a goddamn throne. You see, like, a 10-ton Pope mobile, and you're like, oh, that's where the money goes. But if if you're just at one Baptist church where the preacher is John over there, he's a member of the community, the money that's flowing in, I know that's paying John's salary. Like, like, and I'm perfectly cool with that because he lives in that house next to the church, and it's it's pretty modest. John's not like high on the hog because of his uh, because of his church, and you know he takes any money that that doesn't go to that, and it goes back into the church and back into good deeds. And I always like that too. And that, uh, so I never mind even... giving. Uh, not my fucking shit bag. Oh, sorry. My fucking shit bags. Like, first of all, you do have to give money every Sunday, but 
that's not accounted for really they need to like know how much you're giving because it directly impacts whether or not your daughter gets into first grade you know so, shit. so they're like all yeah, right how much BS. can we take from your account every week automatically in addition to you know what you're giving when you attend the services and no oh, and the services attendance is taken there too because they want to know that you're going every week because yeah. otherwise you're not and it, it was just these guys they, were they, they'll awful. set it up like it's basically almost like your 401k but you get nothing out of it where it's <laughs> yeah. just every time you get paid just automatically a section the kingdom of the heaven church. is your reward like my the son. kingdom of heaven like i like you were saying that like there's that situation where the pastor lives adjacent to the church in a small humble home i've seen that before and to be fair i've seen that more times than not yeah. but i've also seen it where pastors live in enormous houses and they will park in their own parking with a nice ass jaguar or a nice ass ls series lexus and it's like at that point like i always wonder like how do you walking into church see your pastor with a lexus and obviously you can do the uh the old christian cop out of well the lord's blessing him but it's like, ah, uh, is he really? Like, isn't that a bunch of other people you could save? Isn't that a little more proselytizing you could do? Like that, I don't know. Yeah. It just the, seems like to Jesus... be a pastor and to be wealthy is the most is the highest level of cognitive dissonance you can possibly have. To be a, Jesus... a Christian pastor and be rich as fuck. The version of Jesus that that beat up those money collectors, those tax collectors. I feel like he'd do the same thing to these modern day pastors, right? Like if 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 that guy. If that's a true oh, attribute yeah. of, of Jesus Christ, you know, rolling out and tipping their fucking tax tables over and whipping their asses yeah, with a whip. Yeah, people like, uh, P I think his name's Peter Popoff. He's one of the um, TV pastors. Yeah. So I picture them being the kind of person that God would come down now and, like, smite, like, like lightning bolts. Because they're the evil motherfuckers who don't just misrepresent God, you know, because I don't really care about that as much. But they take advantage of old people where they say things like, you know, all you got to do is you just send in your check. You send in your check, and I send you a vial of holy water. This water's been blessed. When you're going to take that water, you're going to sprinkle it over the table that you pay your bills on. You're going to see the Lord's going to come through for you. All you do is wait. You get that check. You put it in the mail. The Lord is looking out for you. I promise. I'm Peter Papa. And it's like, you're a piece of shit. You're a shameless yeah. piece of shit. And this guy, uh, it came out. This, is, this, is, this guy's an old example years ago. But he would take, he had an earpiece in, and his wife would be in the back area uh, with the people who were going up there. And so she would be talking to people, getting information like, what's your name? Oh, Susan, what are you here for? Oh, you have glaucoma. All right, well, Susan with glaucoma, we're going to get your, your eyesight back. Just, you know, give us what you can. And so then they'd go up there, and they would think that Peter Popoff had no idea who they were. And so they would go, oh, oh, man, oh, Susan. I can feel the Lord is telling me your name is Susan, and I can feel that you have glaucoma. Your eyes cause trouble to you, my dear. And it was like, oh. And they would, uh, this guy and his wife would make shitty comments about the people coming to get help from them. They'd be like, look at this stupid, crippled idiot, thinking we're going to save him. How much did you get him for? Like, it, it's a level of shamelessness that's baffling. Like, I don't yeah. know. I, then, let me ask you this. I, I don't re remember this exactly. Like, I know that Jesus like roughed up the tax collectors, but then it seemed like he like told one of his apostles or something that they they actually do have to pay this tax though. But I shouldn't have to pay the tax; I should be exempt because I'm the son of God. Go to the sea, and a fish will come forth and take the fish, and in its mouth is a shekel, and take that shekel and pay from you and I. That that happened, right? Is that the same story? Uh, it might be. I, I know it sounds really familiar. It definitely happened. About. Like, like I'm not just making that happened. up. It definitely happened. Well, I mean, in the Bible. <laughs> well, no, it, it's it's in the Bible is where we should yeah. say it. But yeah, I, I don't know when that. Ha I know, but of course, you're talking about the story where you know Jesus is so mad when he goes into because the, the re he wasn't mad at the tax collecting per se or the the usury. I guess he was mad at the fact they were doing it in the temple. And so they had uh, tables set up everywhere because he was like in, in a new town. And he wanted to go to, to the temple, see what was up. And he went in and there was no worship going on. It was just tables of wares and, you know, people paying taxes and, and loaning money out. And so in a very Christ-like way, he goes bananas, grabs a whip and starts whipping all around this temple at people, whipping them as they're like, ah, Jesus. You know, like, <laughs> well, I guess they did. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that, that guy's out of control. And they're like, just whipping these people, whipping them until they run out of the temple. And he's scolding them the whole time. And uh, I I don't know. I like I like that Jesus. I like take charge, get but it I done. I like just do it because it was bad for business. They just be like, you know what? The temple is a place where 
you know, unpleasant people like yourself aren't allowed to be because otherwise they won't be in the temple. Because he hated all the, because obviously a lot of the people who are benefiting from those, those usury laws and the tax shit were the church. And the, the people like the head honchos at the time were like the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were basically like their priests, the big, you know, we read the Bible, you know, you guys, or we read the Torah, you guys can't read shit, you know, we, uh, we take care of it all for you. And he, he was so mad at them that he said, uh, uh, what was it? He said, when you pray, go into your rooms and do so in private. Do not do it for people to see. Obviously, I butchered the exact language of that. But it led him, which is why I still hated it. I hated it in fucking school. Even when we would go to the goddamn uh, chapels uh, once a week and have to sing about Jesus and get some stupid speaker or whatnot. It wasn't once a week, but too often we'd have to do this shit. And all the time, all the time, there were teachers who wanted to show off how fucking godly they were. And so they would do this shit. They'd stand up in front of everyone in the front row, right in front of the band playing, and raise their hands up and be, oh, God, oh, I'm, I'm feeling God. And it was like, you are exactly the fucking person that Jesus was talking about. You are fucking faking it. You're faking it so people will think you're a better Christian. You're not just a bad Christian, because Jesus also said that he will keep the hot and the cold in his mouth, but he will spit out the lukewarm. That means that the people who don't know of him and the people who uh, are all about him, he'll keep in his mouth, he'll keep in his, like, his system. But if you know about him and you still reject it and you misinterpret his laws and you do things like, oh, he doesn't mean me. He doesn't mean me to stay humble. He needs me up here being a beacon for the Lord to all these kids. Like, no, you're lukewarm. You're doing this for your own gain. Pissed me off then. Still pisses me off now because it's so fucking hypocritical. I liked when I Jesus liked is petty. Taylor. Je yeah. Jesus is riding along on his burro and he sees a, he's a little hungry, a bit peckish. He sees a fig tree up ahead. And he's like, oh, rides over to the fig tree and looks digging around through the leaves, not a single fucking fig. And he gets angry, of course, as the sky, when a fig tree doesn't have some figs on it, and he's peckish. And he says, <laughs> you shall never bear fruit again. And the bush withered, withered away and died. And he wrote off. The fuck yeah. is that meant to, uh, to teach us? What is the allegory there? What do we take from this? That, that like, if you don't well, have do the you... goods when, when the people want them, like, they'll just turn aside? Like, what am I learning? That's well, absurd. That, what, you, uh, what you're actually supposed to learn from that is that God says you will know a tree by its fruits, meaning that you will know a person by what they produce. And oh. so this tree he was looking at, it was producing nothing. It had the ability to produce, and it chose instead to not. The tree and so chose. The tr in, in this allegory, basically. Mm -hmm. Like the, the tree, you know, it, it had the sun, it had the, the, the dirt, it had everything it needed to create figs, and it did not do it. You know, it knew it should be making figs, and it did not. So, and so, so he is said, that like Fine. a person who doesn't go forth and be fruitful and multiply? Do you, do you, do you think that, that maybe someone like myself, who, is, who has made it a lifelong goal not to reproduce, um, like, 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 would that be looked down as poorly as a fig tree not producing fruit? Oh, yeah, definitely. Would Christ, like even, I feel like if Christ saw me, he'd, he'd make my cock wither immediately. He'd point at it, and like, it will never get hard again, and my cock would just wither away. Yeah, he may. You know, you be Kyle's too reasons to kill himself. <laughs> he just throws this account away. For, number the... one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not even not having sex anymore. If you told me you'll, you'll never have sex again, still we'll live through that. If, if I can't masturbate, though, then the, like, what is the point? Like, there's got to be some sex of some kind. Hmm. Or, yeah. or life's not worth going on. If I can still masturbate, all right. Well, you know, I, I got the one hand the left. It way. works. You know, if you couldn't masturbate, but you could still have sex, you can maybe wait that work, too. Oh yeah, a hundred percent could make that work. Like, like yeah. sex is definitely more important than masturbation. Um, yeah.